I'm Erin Lucas, and this is A Lot of Lala Love with Kevin Devine. Kevin grew up in Brooklyn, and he went to Fordham University majoring in journalism. You can definitely sense his journalistic integrity with the way he writes his lyrics. He always has a message in his songs, whether it be political or emotional. But whatever the message is, it really gets your mind thinking. He really refined his sound in 2003 when he was in the middle of creating his album, Making the Clocks Move, which was inspired partly by the passing of his father. Since those days, he's released four more albums, toured quite a fair bit, played Lollapalooza, and gained in popularity. Here's my interview with Kevin Devine. So you said you're from Brooklyn, yes. born and raised? Yeah, uh, born and raised. Uh, I lived in Staten Island for a little while. I went to school in Manhattan and lived there. but. 22 of 32 years in Brooklyn. Wow. So I've been there for the last 12 years and was there for the first 11 years, so it's 23. Wow. My math with the heat. We got a math lead over here, people. Yeah. Look at Yeah, us. with a college <laughs> degree. And I don't know what the difference between 22 and 23. Yes. What did you study in school? Journalism. Oh, ah, me fact. too. Yeah, well, I would hope. How am I doing? You're doing great. <laughs> I mean, I'm a little uh, rusty. Dusty? Drusty. But you're doing We'll great. go with it. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, yeah, journalism and English, Fordham University at Lincoln nice. Center. And how did the music thing evolve? I always did that. Like, in, uh, I was started playing guitar when I was in sixth grade, and I was in, like, the choir since I was, like, in fourth grade. And I was in, like, punk rock bands and hardcore bands in high school, and I kind of was always, like, a good student, and I went to school because I was able to. I wanted to have that safety net. And journalism and English was words, and I like words, and so... But I kind of always knew, even when I was working until I was 26, on and off, and I kind of always knew this is, I was pursuing this while I was pursuing that. What were you working as? A lot of things in my life. I worked at Gap Kids, I worked at Old Navy, I was a baker's helper, I uh, worked in a vegan fast food restaurant, I worked in an executive search firm on Park Avenue, headhunting. I was just writing stuff for them. I'm absolving myself, getting the blood <laughs> off my hands, but yeah. and. Uh, I worked at Sony actually on their like IT side. That was the last job I had before I started making enough money playing music to leave that. It must feel good after all those years. I of folding tiny little Gap baby clothes. Yeah, I. <laughs> I mean, I don't get that sweet discount anymore at Old Navy, but I mean, I haven't really shopped at Old Navy in a while anyway. I'm way above that at this point. No, I. Uh, I, I. It does feel good, and it's also. But working your whole life makes you not averse to work. And I think if you want to be a musician right now, especially one who exists outside the mainstream music industry, you have to have a willingness to work because it's it, it requires that. Yeah. So I feel like I learned that there. And I did some freelance journalism and still like very lightly dabble in that. But I feel like that journalistic mind is about intellectual curiosity and about like staying open and I feel like that informs the songwriting to some yeah. extent and the way you are, you exist on tour too, to like new experiences and new places. So I feel like that's that's what my rationalizing agent in my brain tells myself to justify my college yeah, degree. Yeah, it's very articulate. Thank you. That's I learned that there too. <laughs> yeah. so. well, how is it writing with the goddamn band? It's become kind of more the norm. I, for a long time, I, I kind of wrote everything I still write the songs myself and the structures and have all the arrangement ideas are sort of there mm -hmm. but the last two records in particular I've sort of uh, been able to uh, trust the people I'm playing with a lot more which is not about them it's about your own perfectionist impulse in your yeah. brain um, and it's really opened up what we can do stylistically writing with them is a treat and and it also when I go back and do the other thing and sort of do it all my on my own it's informed by that experience they kind of like feed each other yeah. which is cool yeah what's next to come for you guys well I go I'm in the middle of a tour right now with a band called me without you and a band called buried beds and I go back to that tomorrow in Houston two more weeks of that I have another project called bad books that's me and the guys from Manchester Orchestra nice. we have a record coming out in October we're gonna tour on that and play as Austin City Limits nice. so that's the next thing and then take a little bit of time and write and figure out what I want to do releasing the next record of mine when do you have time to sleep you know I sleep it's like John Bon Jovi said like till I'm six feet under baby I don't need no bed I'm gonna live while I'm alive and sleep when I'm dead <laughs> and that's for you guys. Thanks for hanging out, Kevin. Oh my God. Cocktails? To the bar, to the bar, to the bar, bar, bar.
Kevin was the frontman for band The Miracle of 86 before beginning his solo career in 2002 with his album Circle Gets the Square. He's releasing a vinyl of that album and it's limited edition, so only 750 are available and with those come a digital download as well. Kevin remained a solo artist until recently when he joined up with the goddamn band. Oh, that's fun to say. They uh, recorded the album Between the Concrete and the Clouds, and they also played with him at Lollapalooza. So I guess we'll have to see where he goes with those guys. I'm Erin Lucas. Thanks for watching a lot of Lala Love with Kevin Devine.